Welcome to this online training on developing a cross-border cooperation project. As you know, there are seven key steps in preparing a good quality project. Let's now look at the third step, the objective analysis. Based on the problem tree developed in our first video on problem analysis, you will now build an objective tree. This is a further methodological step towards identifying your project strategy. This objective analysis allows to illustrate the means and ends relationships. It also keeps the analysis of potential objectives clearly based on addressing the identified priority problems. The objective tree will give you an overview of the desired future situation when the problems will have been solved. To build it, the negative situations of the problem tree will be converted into positive situations that can be realistically achieved, that is, into objectives. Then the validity and completeness of the means and ends relationships will need to be checked. Let's now see how our partners Anna, Boris and Carla carry out this objective analysis. So you need to imagine what kind of situation you would like to achieve in the future. What does it look like? OK, let's take our key problem high level of nutrients reaching water bodies in runoff. So, should we just make it low level of nutrients reaching water bodies in runoff? Well, yes. Sometimes it is as easy as that. OK, let's take the next one. Farmers performing nutrient studies. Not quite. You have formulated an action, not a desired situation. Whenever you spot a verb in a goal, like performing, you know it is probably not a proper goal. Try to stick to the problem more closely and think, what should they do these studies for? Well, it should enable them to estimate the amount of fertilizer needed. So what should the objective be? Ability to estimate the needed amount of fertilizer. What about the farmers using too much fertilizer? How do we transform this into an objective? Farmers not using too much fertilizer? It is often not so helpful to use a negative statement in an objective, such as not too much. Try to reformulate. OK, like in farmers using just enough fertilizer. Or reduced amount of excess use of fertilizer. Very good. Now you talk more in terms of a desired situation. Sufficient capacity to monitor oxygen and nutrient levels in water bodies. Higher awareness among farmers, property owners and officials of causes and effects of eutrophication. Larger proportion of nutrients in runoff intercepted. Sewage and wastewater treatment upgraded. Stricter enforcement of laws and regulations on nutrient runoff. Sufficient levels of oxygen for healthy aquatic state. Maintain biodiversity in water bodies. The last thing that needs to be done now is to check if the logic still holds. Well, perhaps the link between the problem of low awareness and farmers' inability to estimate the need is not so obvious anymore now. The ability to estimate comes more from being trained on specific equipment and the possibility to use this equipment. Also, it seems that more things are needed to achieve some of these objectives, seems we forgot these when we analysed the problem. For instance, biodiversity also requires other forms of pollution to be under control. The same goes for natural eutrophication, which plays a role. And so our partners consolidate the analysis carried out at the stage of problem analysis and add a number of objectives that are also relevant for aquatic quality and biodiversity. With a good understanding of the problems, the roles of the stakeholders, and with this full overview of the potential objectives, visually represented in the objective tree, our partners now have a sound basis to determine their project strategy. Have a look here for more details on the objective tree. And let's now watch the next video on strategy analysis.